one of our favorites, Skylar Mays, checking in. Good morning, Sky. How are you, man? Good morning. How are you guys doing? Doing good, man. Tell me, uh, tell me how. Uh, it, look, uh, coronavirus is affecting everybody. There's no bias on it. How has this affected you as a as a student athlete? Oh, I'm miserable, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm realizing how much time really is in a day. Usually, <laughs> my days have been going by pretty fast, but nah, you know, I'm getting spent getting to spend time with family. I'm walking my dog every day, doing things like that. So. So, Sky, uh, what, what what just happened was unprecedented, man. Y'all are gearing up for the SEC tournament, NCAA tournament, right around the corner, and then in a matter of hours, it goes from all of that to absolutely nothing. Can can you kind of take us back to that locker room, into your mindset? What was it like watching all that go down firsthand? Yeah, it was super weird. Um, You know, we had practice that morning, so – uh you know, usually every team gets, uh, you know, has their slot where they get an hour on the court to get some type of familiar familiarity with the court. And uh, so we had ours that morning and um, at around eight, uh, did our little shooting, shooting drills and stuff, uh, got some good work in. And then, you know, we come back to the, come back to the hotel and, um, you know, bam, the SEC tournament's uh, canceled. So, Coach calls us all in, and we talk about it. We're trying to figure out when we're going to fly back. And then, you know, we kind of leave again. And and then about two hours later, uh, we find out the whole thing's canceled. And so, then we regroup again, and, you know, we kind of have our our talk. And, you know, it was, it was so quick. It was hard to really process the whole thing. And, and, and I guess, so how have you been dealing with, with that that process of accepting the fact that your senior year, you had this incredible senior year, you've had this incredible career, you had earned the opportunity to play in that NCAA tournament once again. How are you processing the fact that suddenly it was all just kind of taken away? Like, how, how are, are you over it yet? Have you gotten over it yet? Uh, well, well, um, you know, I've I've had plenty of time to do some reflecting and yeah. stuff, and you know, uh. I definitely feel like I had a I had a, a really good career and especially I went I felt like I went out with a bang and all but um you know I just feel more so for my teammates and you know what they were hoping to accomplish in the the tournament you know luckily I was able to experience it at least once uh but you know I'm just going to miss you know going to war with my guys and and uh all the fun that we had this year cuz I felt like we were really trending trending in the right right uh right direction after that Georgia game, but, you know, things happen, so uh, you, you kind of just got to move forward. I don't want to really harp on the negative. If they gave you another year, would you consider it? I don't see it, man. I don't I don't want to lie to you. Yeah, uh, yeah, no. You know, I've, uh, you know I feel like I, I, I'm pretty much maxed out here, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I love the LSU faithful, and, you know, it's been a great four years for me. I saw a mock draft two weeks ago, or, or excuse me, two days ago, that had you going 51 overall to Oklahoma City. Take me back to last summer when you worked out for NBA teams, what you learned, and then maybe how you improved your stock here in your senior season. Yeah, um, you know, the, the process was really fun. I got five workouts in in, in seven days. Uh, Oklahoma City was actually one of the teams I worked out for. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's about an hour and a half workout. You're getting a lot of conditioning, a lot of shooting in, and, you know, you get to speak with uh, the front office and things like that, which is pretty cool. And it just, you know, last year was kind of about getting my feet wet and, and uh, learning what it took to get into the NBA. And then, you know, I think that really helped me for this year, you know, under, getting a better understanding of what teams are looking for uh, out of guards and, uh, you know, I was able to apply that. I shot the ball a lot better. That's what I think yep. uh, really boosted my stop a lot better uh, versus last year. So, you know, there are a lot of things that I still need to improve on. But, you know, I think shooting helped, shooting the ball really well this year helped me a lot. I thought your performance at Auburn that, that Saturday, that morning when you had 30, you were, I mean, you were the best player on the floor against uh, a top 10 team. I thought did a lot for, for NBA questions that people had about you, especially your way – to shoot the ball. Uh, you heard what your head coach, Will Wade, said about you. you your, your first team was 2-16. and 16. Your junior team was 16-2. and two. 
you were an academic All-American. You were an All-SEC player. Uh, you were on teams that, that had success. You were on teams at failure. Is there anything outside of, of winning at the highest level, winning the national championship, um, that you feel like you did not accomplish during your college, during your college experience? Uh, it's a great question. Uh, you know, I, I think there's, uh, you know, some individual work that I probably could have, could have gotten. I had a chance to get in that I, you know, I, I wasn't able to get, but other than that, um, man, I think, I, I think I've done a lot and I, and I think my career has seen a lot of blessings and I'm just, you know, appreciative at this point. Uh, you know, like, like we all, like we all said, you know, you wish you could go back to the tournament and, you know, give yourself a chance to get that national championship. But, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at peace with how my career is going. Do you, do you have a favorite moment, favorite shot, anything like that that stands out above everything else over the last four years? Yeah. My, my favorite shot was definitely the, uh, you know, as you could probably guess, the Mississippi State yeah. uh, mm. game winner. But uh, favorite moment was definitely winning the SEC championship, um, and uh, you know, getting a getting Miss Miss Faye to go up there and cut the nets with us. That was that was uh, wow. definitely number one moment for me. How, how did your love for basketball change? What did basketball do for you after after Wade? Uh, it's always been a getaway for me. You know, the gym is always my sanctuary, but, you know, especially during th that time, you know, even more so, it was, it was really a getaway. Um, and, uh, you know, you always feel like you're playing something, mm -hmm. playing for something, but, you know, when something like that happens, now you're really, now you really have something that you can, you can, uh, you know, put on your back and, and uh, really look to in, in games and, you know, in practice and, you know, like six in the morning when you don't want to get up, things like that. Um, that's really what Wade's been for me, among many other things. So what what, what, what is your, um, and now that you're about to be out of the system, what, what are your kind of thoughts on Coach Wade and, and what he means to LSU and, and Coach Wade moving forward as the LSU head coach? Well, Coach Wade's awesome. You know, he – he welcomed me with open arms when, you know, we had the coaching change, and uh, he's been everything. He's he's a he's an everyday guy, um, so focused on, you know, what he can do to, um, you know, get get everybody the best opportunity they can have, and you know, he's already trying to talk to me about agents and stuff, and 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 how he can help me in that regard. So he's, you know, he's had my back since since I've known him. Um, and that's just my guy. He, he's the best, man. He's fully committed to, 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 you know, what's best for everybody. And, you know, I had a great three three years with him. University High won two state championships, moved on to Finley Prep, was a starting point guard there, then an illustrious four-year career here at LSU. Skylar Mays joining us, ESPN, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. At nine, my favorite athlete in the world was Chris Jackson. You had a chance to meet him at Mahmoud Abdul Rauf a couple of weeks back. He referenced you in our radio interview of somebody who he watches play still for LSU basketball. I know you spent some time with him that Friday night in town. Uh, how cool was that experience? Oh man, he's got he's got like this aura about him. It's like he's glowing all the time. Uh, unbelievable, unbelievable person. Brings great energy. Uh, you know, he looks great. He looks like he can still go out there and play and and do what he did back in the day. But um, you know, I'm hoping to get some work in with them. We we had we actually had conversations about that, and um, but you know, just just the most humble person, uh, and uh, somebody I definitely look up to. So at nine, my favorite player was Chris. I take my son and his friends to that day at the game, and they talk about you. The nine year olds talk about you like I and my friends talked about Chris. Um, I got to imagine that you've seen that a lot with the youngsters of LSU fans. What's that part of it mean to you, being a Baton Rouge native and know that, that the LSU faithful, the younger demographic, you mean so much to them? Yeah, that's one of the, that's one of the best parts of this whole thing, man. Um, you know, uh, that's, that's the type of stuff that lets you know that your name's going to live on and that, that you've definitely done something with, uh, your, with the stage you're on, so... Uh, for me to be in that position, uh, it's, it's almost surreal. Um, 
now that I think about it. Uh, but you know, I don't think I've, I've, I definitely don't think I've done as much as Chris Jackson has done. I don't know if I should be put in that category, but, um, you know, I'm just thankful. Sky, uh, maybe you can give us some kind of insight into going forward. You mentioned wanting to move forward now and you're moving forward in very uncertain times where like, if you had contact with NBA teams, how's that process working as they're suspended is currently in limbo itself. Or their yeah, I, season. Think I think everything's on a standstill right now. I'm not sure how much contact they're having. Uh, you know, I'm sure they're having contact in-house, but uh, and you know, with agencies. But other than that, it's kind of like the agents. The agents are the middlemen, and uh, you okay. know, I think that's kind of how it's working at this point. So your process right now is you're just trying to find who you're going to ink with, who, which agency. Right, and it's okay. an, and it's a much slower process now. Um, you know, with everything being pushed back. So, uh, yeah, it's going to take some time. How much do you resource Garrett, Temple, and, and Tyrus and the crew in town? Yeah, I talked with Garrett a couple, um, not a week ago, probably four days ago. Um, you know, just asking him about, you know, the whole process and, um, you know, NBA stuff and, you know, just trying to get, get a better feel for everything. And he's he's such a valuable resource and, and somebody I look up to and, uh, you know, just a great human being all in all. Been watching you play since eighth grade, man. Calling your games on the radio in high school is one of my highlights of, uh, of my professional career. Uh, it's been awesome watching you play. You're a great representative for our state and our city. Thank you for the time this morning and good luck. Thank you so much. Appreciate you all having me. Always. Thanks, Scott. Always. There's Skyler Mays checking in. Pleasure to watch you play.